Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, The Trogly's Guitar Show. We have a literal killer Les Paul. Take a look at this thing I found on Reverb Shopping today. Offered by Southside Guitars, we have The Hitman. Apparently, this is a custom-ordered one-off from 2015 that the custom shop did. And at $8,000, this better be good. All right, so first, what, what do we got going on here? Some stripes, some red, a little bit of color, some chrome, something weird going on on with our headstock but ooh a red coa booklet that means this comes from the gibson crimson division which is like their art guitar level guitars as well as like really high-end arch tops so if you ever see a red booklet that says gibson custom crimson division you know you have something great and this is indeed legitimately called the hitman 001 from gibson so let's go to the body here. It's an all black finish with a pinstriping going on here, trying to resemble a three piece suit. You know, something fancy like this, a couple of buttons, you got your nice collar, the white shirt underneath, a nice stark red tie. So we're going for something like this. So right here, you can see the collar. I'm not quite sure what this part's supposed to be, but you got the other side of the collar here and you got your little red tie. Now, what would have been really cool is if instead of this just being a finish, it would actually be like a tie like material right in here or even the top like that oh that would be interesting like maybe do it underneath the lacquer somehow too i'm not quite sure how they would do that i guess if it was a very very thin fabric that could be one of the first fabric top les pauls you can check out grandma's flying v in this episode that had something kind of similar done to it but it looks to me like this is just a design that's within the paintwork and yes, indeed, we do have our little pocket right here. If you're wondering what this little red triangle was, it just kind of gets cut off. So yeah, that, that's kind of an interesting acquired taste. It looks like we've got our little buttons right here, except for those aren't buttons. According to the seller, those are actually legitimate bullets lodged into the top, which you know, that's kind of cool having bullets in the top of your guitar. But if this thing is called Hitman 001, he did a really crappy job. He's the guy that got hit. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like, you know, it, th th maybe those should have been put like inlaid around the edge of the guitar or something like that. But something else that really bugs me about this guitar, and maybe it's just the way that these photos were taken, these lines don't actually appear to line up. This line is like going crooked and then it kind of corrects itself. It's not perfectly straight up and down. And it almost looks like the tie is off center in comparison to this part of the fretboard. But the point is pretty close to where it should be. Maybe this whole design just needs shifted over a tad. But before we go permanently firing this Hitman, maybe they were trying to do it so it would look like buttons and they just wanted to make it out of a cool material. I could see a button manufacturer doing those. You know, something like this. So all right, maybe he's not out of commission yet, but let's take a look at our specs. Looks like two uncovered Gibson humbuckers, probably just the regular 490R, 498T, a Nashville style bridge. So that tells us this is just a regular Les Paul custom, not necessarily a reissue of some sort. Regular tailpiece here with four control knobs, all right? And the reason why I think they really are trying to go for them to be buttons is the design kind of gets messed up right here because, you know, the two pieces of the jacket are coming together. And maybe at the end of the day, the weirdness right here is meant to symbolize like the armpit area where the stripes do get kind of messed with. But it doesn't seem like they did that on this end. But anyways, that's enough on the top. Let's go to the headstock. They continued that pinstriping design. And I gotta say, I like it, but I absolutely hate it at the same time because, because let's be reasonable here. If this was his body and like this is near where his neck would be and his head would kind of be like here. Even if we go by Betty Boop guitar standards, this should be the head. W why is he wearing, <laughs> I mean, I guess is he wearing a pinstripe mask over his face? I, I don't know, but I think they could have just got away with uh, maybe doing a satin black like widow like right here. That way it did kind of look like a bank robber type thing right here. But I guess th they're going for Hitman stuff, which if you're not familiar is a, a hired gun to go get somebody that you don't want to be living anymore. But the reason why I said I did kind of like it. I enjoy this stripe running down the middle of the custom emblem. Like if they could have just cut that off right there, I think that's an interesting look. It's like an extenuation of this in between everything else. Whereas the rest and going through the Gibson logo doesn't do much for me, but you know, it's an interesting piece. Unfortunately, it looks like there's some scratches on the face of the headstock right there. That's kind of a bummer on an art piece like that. 
Now, being born in 2015, unless they paid an unsightly premium to make them use ebony, this is born within the Rich Light era. So this is likely a Rich Light fret board. Looks like somebody has Schaller strap locks on this one too. So that's pretty much the front of this. Let's go ahead over to the back. And that's what that's looking like. So YouTube is a little bit funny about showing firearms. So you'll have to visit my link in the description if you want to see the true back of it. But they have a weapon on the back side of the guitar right here. But the back, they just did the exact same pinstriping effect. Looks like you get the lazy lines over here as well from this photo angle. But look at the neck and now look at the body. I'm curious if this is actually a satin finish, whereas the back of the neck is gloss, because that looks significantly different in this angle. It's either that or they just didn't use as black of a finish on the body, because that looks like it matches top to back. Maybe that's actually just a printed graphic. Now, personally, I, I feel like the weapon on the back, I, it, it matches the theme, but it doesn't look good in my opinion. Like w what is that doing on the back of his neck? <laughs> <laughs> I could see like if they would have put it like a big graphic back here because then you know people could actually see it and have it strapped up like he was wearing it on his back. Okay, that would make sense. Even though technically it'd probably be more of a concealed weapon in this situation, I would bet. But anyways, when you get to the back of the headstock, it just once again handwritten serial number Hitman001. Is there another one out there? I don't know, maybe. You can't always trust listings that say they're one-offs, especially when they have a serial number like this. But we've got the Gibson Custom decal on the back here. So all in all, I mean, it's an interesting Les Paul. I'm glad this exists and that we were able to talk about it today, but am I interested in owning this in the slightest? No. Not for me, a little bit way too cheesy for my own tastes, but I like that it exists. So not for me for eight grand, but you know, if you're a big fan of the Hitman video game series or even 007 or other types of movies or something like that, maybe this is exactly what you want. But maybe you would prefer bullet holes within your Les Paul. Well, check out the Lucille Beck guitar for more information on that. At one point in time on Reverb, there's also a Les Paul Super Custom Butterfly guitar that Three Doors Down guitarist had that had a bullet lodged within it, so he had them make it into a guitar. So I guess that's another one you could potentially seek out if you need metal in your Les Paul. But since we've got some time left today, let's take a look at some other oddities I found this week. So here's one of those Memphis ES-335 studios. You can check out my review and demo on this and the 339. They're interesting guitars. They come in black, they've come in blue, they have no F-holes. I honestly don't like the way they sound stock. They're a little bit way too aggressive, but it's basically the cheapest way to get into a Tom DeLonge ES-333 and potentially remake one over into that because stock from the factory, they only have the one Dirty Fingers pickup and they have this little tenon cover up here. But what this guy did is he was like, ah, I'm tired of this not being versatile. So they extended this thing right here, the tenon cover, and installed a single coil on it. <laughs> and now we get a blade style switch, kind of like on a Stratocaster, so you can get your three different tones. Who knows, maybe they even went as far as installing push pull pots. Because that's what's good about these guys is stock from the factory, they actually have a back control access plate, kind of like a Lucille does. So modifying these is actually a little bit easier than a normal ES-335. And how much does this guy want? 1750. I mean, in really clean shape, I think sometimes they'll go up to like 2500 bucks. It really just depends on how many are on the market, what color, and what people are looking for. Normally, these only sell for up to like $2000. For example, here's one in clean shape. It's actually not a bad deal at 1500 bucks shipped. Seems to be in pretty good shape except for whatever that is. Looks like some sort of a stand mark. But these things have baked maple fretboards and they feel so good. Next up, check out this 74 white Les Paul Custom. You guys remember when I talked about the four life cycles of a guitar? So there's mint condition, slightly used, used to the point where most people go, oh, I don't want it, it's got too much damage. And then there's stage four that not all guitars get to, where it's so aged and used and worn in, it just looks so cool. This is what relic guitars are trying to imitate. Look at this thing, it is absolutely perfect. If you were looking for that really cool aged Randy Rhodes going on type vibe, oh man, this thing is a little bit unevenly aged down here. 
But when you really get to see all this finished checking, wear and tear, this is one of the coolest white Les Paul customs I've seen in a long time. Like super checked back here just by natural aging and time. The lacquer has disgustingly yellowed in so many locations. It's, yeah, that, this guitar is probably pretty enjoyable to play would be my guess. It's either that or it just lived in the home of a smoker who couldn't afford his heating and electricity bills and it would be turned on and off all the time. <laughs> That's another way you could cause all these temperature changes and cracking. I mean, generally you, you don't get checking like this on the back, so this must have seen some very extreme temperature changes, but it sure does look cool. However, this guy knows that he has something cool and he's priced it like a mint condition example. Will he get it? I, I, I don't know. Some guys, they will pay for stuff like this, but it's located in Colmar, France by Eddie's Gear. All right, troglodytes, I think that's enough topics for tonight. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.